Madam Chair, Municipal Insurance and Suits. And it's made do, you know that? No, I'm sorry, I'm on it. Madam Chair, I'll move $3,838,501. Yes, seven. Seconded by? What was the number again? $3,838,501. Thank you. Liability and general insurance, health insurance, life insurance, unemployment, workers' comp, and New Hampshire Municipal Association dues. Who is the second, please? Mr. Marr, Mr. Seconded. Marr seconded. You understand the intent? Yes. All right. In favor? I have discussions, please. Oh, why? There's a little gap there. There's a little gap. Okay, discussion. Madam Chair, um, among the line items in this municipal insurance general line item is NHMA dues. Uh, this budget committee has enjoyed access to NHMA's legal services as well as their coming in and doing a seminar for the budget committee, which has proven helpful. Though some people may not agree that it's proven helpful, I believe most people think it has. I certainly do. Common education is always helpful. However, I'm a little concerned. Uh, what I've been hearing recently is that our access to NHMA has been cut off, and so my motivation on this NHMA <coughs> due line item is, is being somewhat deteriorated as a result of that cut off. The cut off I'm referring to, Jenny, is I have not confirmed it, but I have been told that the Board of Selectmen uh, made a motion in one of their non camera meetings uh, to not allow, uh, or I should say, to allow certain people only to contact NHMA and ask them questions. Uh, those people slash entities did not include the Planning Board, did not include the Planning Board of Adjustment, did not include the Budget Committee, et cetera. Um, as I said, I didn't read the motion itself, but I understand it to be true. And so I'm concerned about the NHMA being not as advantageous to the town as it has been. And I'd be delighted if, if Rusty could talk to us a little bit about that as the inspections rep. Uh, trying to remember back as best I can. If you'd, you would ask me beforehand, I could have probably made sure I had a better answer for you. Uh, it was December 5th, Rusty. But I think anytime, uh, anytime anybody's had any questions that, you know, we've allowed them to go to the NHMA. So what what you did with your vote uh, because that was not those are not sealed minutes. Yep. What you did with your vote was cut off uh, everyone lower on the list except for the manager, assistant manager, town council, tax collector and town clerk. It doesn't stipulate what entities were on the list under those four particular positions. But uh, you have you uh, stated at that meeting that other uh, chairman, et cetera, would have to go before the board of selectmen. Well, correct. Isn't that we weren't going to let you do it? It's, it had to go it, before. It would the, have to be a. Request it would have to go through the request. Correct. Of the um, uh, to the board of selectmen. Correct. Not that we wouldn't let you do it. Just it had to come through as a request. Uh, now I will share one comment with you regarding this. I took over as chairman of the budget committee in September when uh, Mr. Nick Bridle uh, resigned because of his new job. And in, oh, end of October, early November, I had a question, so I called and reached Attorney Buckley at the NHMA. And of course, having served uh, on the board of selectmen, I had his phone number, so I called. And I don't even think I remember what the question was, but I called, and he was exceptionally rude. And after that, he said, oh, well, how did you get through? And what, uh, you're supposed to be in line. You're supposed to hang up and go and get in the queue because you're interfering with other people who have already phoned in and are trying to get questions answered. So I said, well, this is very nice. So I hung up. And then I heard uh, from an individual that town council had notified the New Hampshire Municipal Association.
when uh, Nick Bridal took over as chairman of the budget committee in March. And so I said, oh, well, then I'm, I'm missing something here. I should have stopped by to see town council. So I s stuck my head in Mark's office one time when I was in the uh, town office in eh, early November. And I said, by the way, Mark, I understand that you notified the Municipal Association when Nick Bridal took over as chairman so he could call in. And would you be kind enough to notify them because it probably slipped through the cracks that I assumed the chair in September. I never got a response. I never heard anything. I was never notified. As I left, uh, I didn't stand there and berate Mark. I just asked him if he'd please do the same thing that he did for uh, Mr. Bridal when he took the chair. And I, as I was walking away from his office, his secretary was right next door, and I said, Ann, you know, when you get the memo or whatever it is, would you just call me and tell me and I'll just pick it up? And I got no response. So um, the Municipal Association is not on my good list, but that's all right. <clears throat> now, so we've beaten that to death. But after you make that point, that, subsequent to that, as I understand it, the Board of Selectmen made another motion. Previously, you made a motion that said only chairman can contact an HMA uh, without saying, may I please to the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. And after this point, December the new motion was um, cut everybody off the cut, list. Cut, certainly except cut off the, the chairman. Five. Everyone except for a town five. treasurer, town clerk, and town, town manager, manager well, assistant manager. Individuals. Whatever. Everyone but those individuals named have to go do may I please the board of select. Mm -hmm. And so when I said cut off, that's what I meant. We felt cut off. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, okay. So does that not also suggest, because it kind of does to be, that the one free seminar town is entitled to, forgive my throat if you will, uh, the one free seminar the town's been quoted to is entitled to because of NHMA's policy when you pay the enormous dues that we do pay, that the town gets one free seminar a year. We discovered that a few years ago and we asked for the budget committee to use it because we wanted to have a common education for the whole budget committee, have it on TV so everyone in the town could have that education as well because we value having a common education. So with this recent action, it kind of suggests very strongly in my mind that we may not have access to that NHMA seminar next year, which is pretty disturbing because it was like a very important thing. I don't believe that's so. I mean, just, all you have to do is ask and we can, we can make sure it's done. Well, we did. We asked, uh, the budget committee asked in uh, late November uh, for Regina to get a sense from the Board of Selectmen on whether they'd be inclined to do that. Uh, she said she would, and report back at the next meeting. She has not done so yet. Well, I'm not I, Regina. I'm not. I understand. Yeah, I I'm, just saying, I'm just saying. We. This is this is another indication I, I that maybe we're being cut off, but we don't want to be told yet. I, I would say ask Regina because if you ask her a question, I'm sure she'll. Well, we bring have. Back to you. It's in the minutes. Actually. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I mean, I'm just saying the fact that we're not getting a response is just another indication that maybe we're kind of like uh, being cut off. From, from access okay. to Mr. Kravitz has a yeah. question. Uh, I've got one comment. The budget committee has new people coming on periodically. It takes few years to know what happens in the town. And they only learn by asking the department heads questions while they're here. So having a budget committee submitting questions beforehand is fine, but uh, any member of the committee is going to ask department has whatever they want to ask the residents and they have a right it's not on the municipal insurance line that we're discussing um, but sunny okay uh, the, so my, my my issue is is that uh you know i'm inclined to maybe think about cutting this out and and, the, and i'll say the reason why three years ago david lang made a motion you may recall the deliver session to cut out the energy rate dues and the deliver session approved that but the voters did not approve the budget so it ended up to be a default budget. Right. So that cut didn't count. But one of the things that occurred was that the budget committee encouraged the uh, executive director of NHMA to come before the budget committee and explain who exactly they were and what they're about, so that we could have an understanding going forward to, to the you know. And, and we got a good education out of that. You were there, Mike, right? It was it was very enlightening, and we didn't realize, for example, that the town was entitled to a free seminar. Apparently, we have been entitled to that for many years and never been used. 
And so we learned a lot from that. And there were some pros and cons in my mind about NHMA as there would be any organization. No organization is perfect, right? No person is. And, and so we learned that some of the good stuff and not, not so good stuff. And on balance, I thought, and others in the committee agreed, that we should probably continue to fund it because there's a net value added to the entire town. Independent of the fact that they themselves admitted they are, in fact, that central purpose, a lobbying group at the State House that lobbies for the Board of Selectmen. That was what they said. Okay? Now, they do other stuff that is very useful to the town, and oftentimes their lobbying efforts on behalf of the Board of Selectmen are actually in concert, are well aligned with the Budget Committee's interests and other elements of the town's interest as well. Sometimes they're not, most of the times they are. So on balance, I saw a net advantage. But when I see us not having access, as we have for years, call up the NHMA attorney. I don't think we've ever abused it. I don't think I personally called him once. All right? But knowing he was there uh, was very helpful. Because I would go over and watch the videos, and, and, and I would get my answers that might pop up during time. I'd get it off right off the video. I didn't need to call him. Right? But knowing he was there was very, very comforting kind of thing. Maybe others have. I guess Mary Lee's had a question she wasn't allowed to get access to. That is very disturbing. And it takes off the, the, um, the positive elements that I said, you know, it's a net plus, and now I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's not a net plus anymore if we're being kind of cut off. I don't think it's the NHMA that's cutting you off. No, it's not. So why blame NHMA? I'm not blaming them. What I'm saying well, is that their ability to deliver all those pluses. Association. Yeah, but, I mean, his thing was he was told not to d only well, deal I with certain people. I didn't know people. that, but I tried clarifying with counsel, and that got nowhere as well. I think this all is in the thing. We all got to get along, whether you're okay. budget committee, selectmen, school board, or precinct. You all have to work together because it's Hampton. I appreciate that, but the selectmen chop us off. That doesn't sound like a very nice thing to well, do Well, then I'd go in and talk to the selectmen. Well, that's why we have a oh. selectman's rep. We're talking to right now. Selectman's rep here. And he's saying, gee whiz, anybody but here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but Jenny, just to be clear, I'm not blaming the NHMA. What I am saying is, is that the value added that they did bring to us is, is has been lessened by a consequence not of their own making. Right. Okay? So I'm not blaming them. All right? But the only action the budget committee can take is either to fund or not fund. Or underfund or something to that effect. We, well, all we can do is affect the fund. Yeah, that, that is to say the funding mechanism. And so that's all we can do is consider the funding mechanism in that context. And so that's why I bring it up. I'm not beating up on NHMA. Okay, Mr. Henderson has a question. I guess my question is going to be is why was there another layer um, added to the budget? I mean, in the past, okay, I'm sure I've watched some of this and with some of us in the we have questions, okay? So we would go through the uh, board chair and then she would relay that to the NHMA. Right. Now we have this like, you know, well, we have to come to you, or we have to specifically advise you know, what we want for an answer before, or what we want for a question before we go forward. The town pays for the NHMA as a service. You would think that it would be eligible you know, to everybody. I mean, just like when I was working at the PD, running union business and things like that, I had access to call the NHMA and ask them questions on different things. You know? And uh, it just seems like there's another layer here that doesn't need to be done. If there's a question that needs to be answered by members of the board, we go to our chair, the board would go to the NHMA, and we get an answer on it. You know? Why well, add, add another bureaucracy? And, and I agree with Jenny, we're all trying to work together. You know, that's what we're all here for, you know? And they demanded that the Channel 22 be turned off. Well, that's a and different topic. That really. No, it's not a different topic. That was NHMA, I believe, that did that. What? NHMA is the one that yes, did that. Yes, they did. And they said because they represented the selectmen and they weren't going to give any legal advice they did on not camera. Say that. And they gave no legal advice whatsoever. Well, but question, that's another story. My question is why did we add another layer? Yeah. If that could be answered. Well, I'd, yeah. I'd have to go back and solve And the basically. selectmen can't account for what the NHMA. And I'll have to go back and look and see why we did that. I can't answer that off the cuff. Yeah. Okay. We have. Well, you said you're going to go back and look at it. When might we re get a response? Oh, it'll probably take. Uh, either Regina will bring it back to you, or. But as soon as as soon as I we I can look at it, I'm not going to give you an uneducated answer. I'm not going <coughs> to. Can we have that by <laughs> Thursday? Very odd. Okay. The, the layer is the proposal there. It almost seems like it appears to be. Hopefully, it's not. It cut people out. 
It's actually going in front of the selectmen all the time. I think it would be a pain to you people if people wanted to ask you and they had the advantage of going before. It doesn't seem to make any positive sense, but it's interpreted as being negative. Does that make sense to you, what I just said? I can understand what you're saying, but I'm not going to answer your question <laughs> until I can look at it. Yeah. Can you give me a chance to look at it first. Yeah. Thank you, Russ. Can we ask? Okay, I'll try to do the best I can. Madam Chair, I'll do the best I can. Thank you. Where we're at presently then with this is we can leave it in and we can't touch it again unless someone brings it up we, in public hearing. We can. Or we can take it out and we can't touch it again unless we, someone brings that up in public hearing. We are still doing final review Thursday night. No, we're doing well, final well, we have a, we have a rule. and Thursday night. Right. Right. But you have the right to say your piece at the deliberative session. Like any public individual. I have a bottom line total, 2017, for municipal insurance, 3,838,501. Can, can I get a statement from Christy, perhaps, or uh, Tom Manager, about that, that the accuracy of the actual insurance numbers here? Are they all, like, uh, solid estimates? I mean, are they quotes or what? Uh, Is that the same total you have, Christy? Our life insurance rates are set, they're based on salaries, so when there's changes yeah. in salary, that number does fluctuate. Um, so basically, it's all the salaries in the budget were used multiplied by the rate uh, to get that number. Liability and workers' compensation are the quotes that we did receive from private. Those are the quotes there. And then health insurance is based on all of the current employees, the plans that there are, any known changes that I was aware of if I knew someone uh, was pregnant and going to have a child and would be upgraded to a family, I did incorporate that right. into these numbers. And any empty or vacant position, I think there was a couple at fire and maybe one at public works at the time, I, we always have just assumed a two-person plan for that position just to be safe. We don't assume there's going to be a family, but we don't also don't want to assume that there's going to be single. So that would be one of the assumptions that was made on the health insurance line, would be for any vacant positions. When you say the life insurance is based on salary, you mean full-time salary, right? Yes. Right. With one exception. The life insurance, yes, the salary, and then uh, the town manager is included in also. Right. With that number. So there's and one the part-timer that's special. included in that. And police specials. And, and police specials, yes. which are in their union, contract, actually. according to their contract, according to their, their contract, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So full-time contracts, union contracts, and one part-time of the assistant top manager. Okay. okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have a bottom line: three million eight three eight five zero one. Who made the motion? Mr. LeBranch made the motion. Motion is tomorrow. Second. Yeah. Okay. You understand the intent in favor of finalizing this figure on the municipal insurance to go to the public hearing. Okay, unanimous. Madam Chair, 